party wagon and hold on to your pizza. Hi, this is Francois Chow. I am the shredder from Secret of the Ooze. And uh, it's been a pleasure for me to talk to Justin and Eric on Epic Tales from the Sewers. It's been great, guys. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Epic Tales from the Sewers, your most excellent Ninja Turtles podcast. Today, I am joined once again by my co-host in podcasting, Mr. Eric Will. How you doing, Eric? Uh, I'm hurting. You're hurting? You're hurting? <laughs> yeah. waiting, waiting for the yeah. next issue of Lost Years. That's why you're hurting, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm here. How you doing, Justin? I'm doing all right. We got a snowstorm, but you know, other than that, we're okay. I don't have to put my Michelangelo goggles on to go through it. But uh, enough of that. We are here because we have a very special guest that we asked to be on the show today. We have uh, artist Chris Vance. Um, he's an artist in the TMNT community that uh, he's recently been doing some wonderful sketch cover commissions. Um, and uh, you can see his work for The Last Ronin, that kind of stuff that he's seen, these sketch covers. His art has been published in the Kickstarter book Dragonfly, which was an original story from Jim Lawson that um, – it's a little bit of a story there. He'll he'll tell us about it. You can check him out at uh, chrisvanceart.com or on Instagram at uh, it's ctofer18 uh, at um, Instagram. Right, Chris? Yep, that's right. Mr. Chris Vance. So, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Let's see. We've got we got some some watchers already. So Vance, so <laughs> I I'm gonna assume that um, if if they're on here, it's probably Bish kids. So you know. Most likely, especially oh, if, if they call me by my last Jim name, it's definitely them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Stephen absolutely. King guy. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yep, he was our last <laughs> guest. So, another, another great artist. Um, anyone mm -hmm. uh, go check out our last episode uh, with uh, the artist, not the author, Stephen King. So, that's great. Cool. Oh, but we're we're here to talk about Chris. We want to talk about Chris's art. We want to talk about his inspiration for his art, um, his experience on tags, um, and um, his experience at the Granite State Comic Con. So uh, let's let's start off at the the beginning, and and this is going to be somewhat familiar because this is kind of where we went through before, where um, you know there was a freak lightning storm, and we had to discontinue that interview. So <laughs> you know, you never know if that'll show up on the internet one day. So, but. Um, so what's your history like, Chris, with uh, Turtles? Where, when did you get started um, paying attention to um, them? I got started uh, way back when I was around about about seven or so. Uh, first instance introduction to Turtles was a uh, Tales from the Turtles uh, number two. My dad took me to a comic shop. I was like, pick anything you want. I saw, you know, weird Turtles on the cover of this comic, and I was like, uh, I, I want to try that one. <laughs> so... Uh, never looked back after that you know got very interested and in after that it was reading more of the black and white stuff and uh watching the cartoons at the same time because about i was about seven so i think the show was just starting in 87 mm -hmm. so i was watching the show and reading the old black and white comics uh then eventually moved on to the archie stuff which you know i i find that to be really fun I love the Archie stuff. I've got, uh, yeah. I just got my Dreadman. So, oh man, that was, he was tough to find. All, all I have is a slash right now. I'll, I'll definitely want to build that Mutanimals team. Oh yeah. I, I was, I was telling my wife about the Mutanimals and I'm like, if you could imagine, you know, as a seven year old, the number one superhero team in your life is a group of mutated <laughs> misfits that are fighting against a winged alien that was based on a, a David Bowie song. Like you have no idea. I'm like bigger than the X-Men, bigger than the Avengers, bigger than, than the justice league. It was the mighty mutanimals, you know, and with the turtles on their side. So I, yeah, I'm totally with you. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you were really into uh, Mirage stuff and uh, do you, um, and I forget if I asked you this before, but do you remember anything about that first issue that you read, the uh, Tales of the TMNT number issue two? Uh, I remember really liking the art in it. Um, that was the introduction to Nobody, I believe, that that issue. Um, oh, cool. It was a, it's a wraparound cover uh, with Nobody on, on the main part and then, like, the Turtles on the, on the back end of it, I guess. Um, but I remember thinking that was, you know, it was pretty cool. I thought it was, you know, it was weird as in black and white because most of what I'd seen before was, you know, color. But um, I really liked the art, so 
that that stands out a lot. And that's um that's Jim Lawson. That was my first introduction to Jim Lawson. So that's got to be cool. And I, I imagine um I imagine you met Jim. Or you must have, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you still have that issue? Of of tails? Yeah, definitely. I have yep. I have the one that I've had when I was since I was like little, and then like a. a cleaner and less red copy <laughs> <laughs> i had yeah. i had the same thing i had like an issue of x-men and um i i got to meet jim lee and, and and they're like you can have him sign three things and i'm like well he's gonna sign the first comic i ever got so you know just exactly. like randomly it's like x-men 268 or some some crap and i'm like here this is my first comic book and he's like yep. the actual one i'm like yes so <laughs> it's yep. like Please sign. <laughs> I had Jim do the same thing for for that book. So yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like the other one I had him sign was like, uh, what did I have him sign? Uh, Countdown to Infinite Crisis, which is my actual number one favorite comic. And um, was the other was uh, like the X Men with uh, Captain America, Black Widow, and Wolverine on it. I forget what number that is. But I'm like, yeah, th- this one too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that's that's just you know Jim Lee you know he did he did actually you know do some turtle art and stuff like that but you know we can come back to that but that's that's cool so let let's talk about another Jim so so you got to meet Jim Lawson and you know uh, hopefully tell him about how you love the um, the work that he was doing so yeah de- definitely I uh, I got to you know I guess you're gonna like get into this uh, that we uh, I'm working on the new adventures of uh dragonfly um which is a character that jim jim lawson uh, created uh he had a kickstarter that he was doing where he collected all his dragonfly stuff together in one in one book uh one of the tiers for pledging was to buy the ip and a good friend of mine and this kid uh west briggs he he bought the ip and you know hit me up was like hey you want to draw this and i'm like uh yeah of course i'll definitely you know take over you know drawing a jim lawson book um big shoes to fill but you know we we spoke with him we we all met and had dinner and stuff and uh we we talked and he was really behind us you know to to continue the stories of this of this uh dragonfly book that's so cool does does Dragonfly cross over with the uh, turtles at all, or is it like in their universe? I don't really know much about Dragonfly, actually. I it's say. it's a it's a separate uh, it's a separate thing. It's just all Jim's creation, separate from Turtles. Even though the main character uh, John is a giant turtle, <laughs> um, but he's not. You know, he doesn't have anything to do with like the, the Ninja Turtles at all. Is it like a Cerberus sort of thing? Like, does he just like like wander around, or maybe like Swamp Thing? He he exists in like uh, it's like their own world, and the main characters are it's, it's uh, John, a dog that talks. His name is Catch, and Dragonfly is a female character that you know that's the the title of the book. It's uh about her, and they're kind of trapped, I guess, on this in this world and they don't know like much about the place. They all just kind of wake up on this, in this world and they're trying to figure their way out through things. And, you know, they come across different things like, uh, portals and caves and, uh, giant robots, you know, a few crazy creatures, tons of dinosaurs. So it looks like a lot of, uh, prehistoric area. I know Jim Lawson has a lot of, uh, other stuff he's done with dinosaurs, like, the paleo book so it's it's really fun it's a lot of fun stuff to draw i i love dinosaurs so i'm i'm all about that <laughs> well now i gotta ask because why why wouldn't i what's what's your favorite dinosaur oh man um i have to say that stegosaurus is probably my favorite i mean nice. most people will probably say like a raptor or something but i i like the stegosaurus just the more interesting ones you know plates and you know really neat features to look at and draw 
So early Jurassic uh, issue. So I I have my answer prepared because I always know it's going to be a Styracosaurus. That's always my <laughs> answer. So um, you know, not not a tri- Triceraton, but they they could have made one into a Triceraton. And you would look like the right. dinosaurs a little bit. Aaron, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite dinosaur? I know, I know. You guys are probably going to be thinking, well, just because of the turtles. Actually, before the even before the turtles, I've always liked Triceratops. Don't know why. Oh, nice. They've always stuck out. To, they always stuck out to me for some reason. They're they're so special. I mean, that's like my my favorite is basically a Triceratops that has spikes in the back instead of like just that that hood, and um, mm-hmm. it doesn't have the two big horns that come out. But one of the main characters, and yes, I'm calling her a main character, everyone, is Pepperoni, who is a dinosaur, who is a a, a ceratops, a protoceratops, I think. So, right. I really, I really like dinosaurs too, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, Pepperoni. So, you know, that's that's really cool, and you know, there's there's always room for more dinosaurs. I feel. Yeah, I, I think everyone at some point in their childhood, you know, is in love with dinosaurs at some point. All uh, the good ones, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Probably before I wanted to like you know draw, uh, I wanted to be in, in uh, an archaeologist. So, Very cool. Do you ever do ahead. you ever put that into uh, into your work? Like uh, maybe like so. Oh, here they come across some fossils or something. It's like oh look, there's a trilobite or or like something else that would be like it's a little Easter egg of of your passion for um, for paleontology or anything like that. I mean, I drew, I drew like a ton of dinosaurs. I still, you know, I still do that. If I, you know, do anything dragon-like or whatever, I kind of like make it more dinosaur-like when I draw. <laughs> they also love dinosaurs before TMNT. Heck yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the stepping stone, right? Yeah. Dinosaurs yeah. leads to TMNT, you know? Creatures so. of all kinds. But yeah, I guess, I mean, when Triceratons like show up in the book, you know, I was super excited. So, and then you have all the uh, Savanti Romero issues where they, they time travel. That's all. That's always fun. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think you're referencing, I want to say issue five is where they first show up. Because I, I think it's like five through seven. Is that all Triceratops? Yeah, yeah. That's when Triceraton. they... Triceraton. Yeah, where they go, where they uh, hop on the transmat, that's in four. And then they t- they teleport to uh, whatever the dimension or the world is where Future Toy is. And that's that's where they meet him. That's so, a- yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it is five. Have you had occasion to draw any uh, Triceraton before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a few. There's a there's a uh, one of the best kids. I think I've drawn at least two or three different things where it's someone versus the Triceraton, and that's that's always fun. It's one of my favorite things. To, I'm gonna take to a draw. wild guess: Casey Jones <laughs> versus a Triceraton. <laughs> I haven't I haven't drawn that yet. I've I've drawn That'd Usagi a... versus Triceraton, uh, Ooh. Ooh. Donatello and Venus. No Raphael. Nope, not yet. Wow. Venus, that's that's such a that's such a specific request too for someone to want. What's um, Venus, Venus though? Yeah, it was it was it was weird, but I you know I had to make her look cool and she's kicking the trash every time. <laughs> I I was think it... Venus is a cool character. I I'm just kind of surprised. Like like Eric Eric loves Kirby, you know the uh, the lost uh, turtle there. So oh I, yeah. I think it's cool as hell when people like the obscure characters. Like, like mm-hmm. I love Lita, and I'm a huge Mondo Gecko guy. I have a feeling yeah, you might too. be too. Yeah, I had a feeling. Mondo, Mondo is definitely my my favorite mute animal. I'm excited to see that uh, he's going to be in the new movie, and that uh, mm-hmm. Paul Rudd's going to be playing. Paul Rudd's doing his voice. Yeah. That's to be that's to be a lot of fun. I think channeling the uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall Kunu sort of vibe. <laughs> All right, that, two that's to be cool. <laughs> That's gonna be a good time. Yeah. yeah. Do you um? What do you think of the design for the new one? For the new uh, uh, movie? Yeah, the uh, mutant mayhem. Yeah, it's it's a little quirky. Like you know, at first I was just kind of like I don't know, but uh, I do. It, it's grown on me a lot more. The one design I'm not that keen on is uh, is Rocksteady, but you know, like I said, they they grows on me. I know this is more like for kids, but. From the teaser apps that I saw, you know, it looks like a lot of fun. And it's kind of channeling that old school, like, 80s, yeah. 80s uh, cartoon. And you can tell that, like, I guess, uh, Seth's 
a whole uh, exposure to turtles is in that era of it where it's all you know the action figures of all the crazy characters and yeah. all the crazy mutants. So I, I'm I'm just glad that we get to see a lot of those things like actually brought to life like on a, in a in a movie like. I didn't think we'd ever see like a leatherhead in a in a movie. Yeah, in yeah. Mondo, I'm like Ray Flay yeah. and all that. I'm like, you, you, I'm like, hold on a second, you got me at Mondo, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just that, that would be so cool. I, if I you ask Mondo. me, I think they're going to be working on a second one after this. I think yeah. so too. I I think it's going. I think it's going to be a hit. I'm going to be honest with you. I when I heard Seth Rogen was doing, I just. I was like, oh God. I hope Yeah, right. Like, you know what it's I'm saying? All you can hear is his laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seth Rogen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You Seth just hear his laugh is, over and over again. This is this is Seth Rogen to me. Well he's he's, he's yeah. doing um he's, he's doing the voice of Bebop. Yeah. Yeah, he is Bebop voice. I mean, it's 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 definitely gonna be interesting. When I first seen the screenshot, I was kinda like, eh, you know, just yeah. just a screenshot. And I'm like, then I watched the uh, watch the trailer. I was intrigued. Um, you know, like a lot of people say, it's it kind of gives off the uh, the Spidey verse vibes. Yes, yeah, yeah. sort of the uh, Panatone so, sort of filters and yeah, all that. Right. I think that's I think ever movie. since I think ever since that movie came out, uh, people have just been stepping up a notch in that whole like using that style. It mm-hmm. it fits, especially for comic book based stuff. Um, it looks really good. And the uh, the other thing that I, that I it was a plus for me is I don't know if you guys have seen, um, oh, what the heck is that that movie? Oh, the Mitchells versus the Machines. Yes, of course, great. Movie. Yes, I've seen that. It's one the same. It's the same director. And like we watch, me and my wife watched that on a whim, and we were just cracking up, what, just dying laughing on that. At that movie. Yeah, Seth Rogen was actually the voice in that. Was the voice of the dad. No, that was Danny no, McBride. no. That's that's Danny McBride. But yeah, uh, Eastbound and Down. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Seth was in that. He might, he might be. He in might it. have done a voice, but yeah. We got Maya Rudolph it? in it, and, and she's machine, doing a, a voice in this one too. So it's yeah. That that movie has such like it's got such deep, like just a. Uh, like uh, plot and character development and all that. It's, it's so good. And um, I had it's, no idea I was going to like it as much as I did. <laughs> yeah. My, my kids, uh, my kids uh, called me up because they were like, dad, you got to watch this movie. It yeah. made me think of you. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So, and <laughs> this was before they, they had uh, lived with me and they live with me now. So we watch it and they're like, Oh, I cried the first time I saw this. I'm like, wow. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, I guess, I guess I remind them of the dad a little, but there you go. <laughs> You like that logo? I know who that is. <laughs> Probably Ernest. Oh, that e, the Ernest. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Our, up, our wonderful logo artist. So, and um, I, I've told him this before, but I'm I'm never changing that logo. I just freaking love it. You know, Ernest, Ernest Man is the he's a he's a good artist. I, I I like that guy. We we give each other crap all the time. He's he's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah. Another another Bish kid, and you know it's uh it's such a great community too, because, you know, before, before you and I started talking about this interview, I didn't know that you were specifically in that group. Cause right. I mean, I, I kind of like interact a little bit here and there, you know, uh, every Friday we throw out the middle finger, you know, th- things like that. But, you know, I, I kind of dabble, Eric dabbles, you know, and yeah, I don't, I, I he probably dabbles more than I do. I, I'm <laughs> hardly in, I'm in and out. Like, um, yeah. I mean, I, at one point I was in there, quite a bit whenever I first started up and everything, but you know, yeah. things been busy and all that other stuff. So I, I oh, love I need... it because you get all this direct information, like direct from Ben Bishop, you know, and, and it's like, oh yeah, IDW's releasing these figures. You're like, holy crap, no new new turtles figures coming out based on the last Ronin. Like I, I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> or Shredder's coming to Call of Duty. Shredder's coming to yeah, another <laughs> one. Absolutely, you know. Um, That's crazy, man. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah, are you are you a Call of Duty Call of Duty guy? I am not actually. I don't really I don't really play a lot of those uh those shooter games, and I'm I'm barely even like online. Like I, when I play video games, it's usually just me by myself. <laughs> what do you play? Um, when I have the time, and like you know, when I'm not like trying to get art done, I I have a 
bunch of, like a library of stuff I haven't even like touched yet. Like I have like Uncharted. I have to play through the Miles Morales game. Um, I have Ghost of Tsushima. That's a good um, game. It's it's fun. I like the thing is I when I saw that I was just like okay I really really want a, a samurai video game like a realistic one and then they, I heard about that game and it was like waiting years for it to come out then it finally came out and I was just so excited for it but uh it's hard I want a Usagi skin for it though yes <laughs> it's hard it, it's second time that you mentioned him so are you a big Usagi fan yeah yeah definitely um definitely a fan of Usagi I like a lot of you know. Uh, that Japanese stuff, and I like that uh, Stan, when he does the book, he puts all these little, like, notes and references in them, because, you know, I don't know a whole lot about, you know, the Japanese culture, but that's... Uh, oh, nice. That's that's one of those those books that, like, you know, I learned stuff in it, too. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I'm definitely into a lot of that, you know, feudal Japan type stuff. Um are you into uh, anime too, as well? Yeah, I've I've seen a, I've seen a bunch of different things. Uh, a good sword fighting movie that's animated that I would like uh, is uh, Sword of the Stranger. Oh, I gotta write that pretty, down. I never heard of that. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. It's it was is one that, a that I style? saw. By the way, hi Velvet uh, J. Splash <laughs> Pages. Shout out to Splash Pages. <laughs> No, not not a Kurosawa, but um, it's got a lot of those like elements in it, which is why you know it's one of those things that I like. But the sword fight in it is really, really realistic. You know, despite all the like, you know, they they do some of the crazy like you know flash and like class stuff that they do in, in animes, but you know, it's pretty uh, pretty good with the sword fight animation, and it is really really great. Have you ever seen a movie called The Hunted with uh, Christopher Lambert from um, from Highlander? No, I've heard about that though. Oh, dude, it's ninjas versus samurai with Christopher Lambert, who's just like a regular business guy, in the middle of it, and they're trying to kill him. <laughs> it is insane. It's like on a they're on a train, and the ninjas are on this end, and the samurais on this end, and oh my god, the sword fighting and everything. It's it's so good. It's you just know? called The Hunted. Uh yeah, it's called The Hunted. I'll um I'll try to find a <clears throat> a picture. I'll send it over. Hey, he says thanks, Coop. <laughs> Let's see what do we got here. We've got uh he likes uh, the original nine uh, Sons of Anarchy. Do you like Sons of Anarchy? I guess. I'm like... Oh, I haven't even watched any like like hardly any Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> oh, original nine. I don't know. So and Rob says that you were. Um... Oh, he, I think he means like the uh, the bitch kids. Oh okay. yeah. Oh, so you're one of the original nine. bitch kids. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm like like two or three or something like that. Oh, damn. Oh, okay, he says that that should be a prequel series, uh, possibly like uh, the the Lost Years. So. <laughs> and oh, we're playing to dinner. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um. So so with this, um, I the reason I mentioned anime is because I was, I was looking at some of your art and I noticed the really clean lines on it, you know, and that is sort of like an anime sort of inspiration that you see sometimes where it's uh, mm -hmm. like just really clean lines and all that. Um, is there like a particular um, anime or anything like that that's influenced you? I mean, not really. I, I kind of get influenced by whatever I'm like looking at at the time. It depends. Like there's a lot of, uh, Usually when I ink stuff, it ends up being pretty clean like that, but that's just how I ink, I guess. But um, <laughs> oh, <man>. some of it <laughs> Wait, <laughs> must be earnest. I'm sure that's earnest. <laughs> it's um, just just for anyone yeah. listening uh, on audio. It says it says, "Wait, Vance knows how to draw." So yeah, that's, yeah. From that's, that's from earnest. That's definitely earnest. <laughs> we had, we had a what's up, fellas. So. What's up, Brandy? <laughs> Oh, and then uh, with uh, with Ernest, Ernest, uh, make sure you put in there what the name of your uh, your uh, your ice truck is, uh, so so we can get people there. I I, I was looking. I, I think he's got uh, some interesting anime themed uh, ones in there too. For sure. Oh, and then someone Gargoyle. saying gargoyles. Randy. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Randy, I love gargoyles. Absolutely. Like it, he, if I he could... probably want, he probably wants me to talk about gargoyles because I I love gargoyles as well. That's another. We, we can thing. 
I'll, I'll, I'll drop something on you when we talk about gargoyles in a second, but <laughs> I, I just want to go back to anime. So, um, do you, do you watch anime? Um, or do you watch anime now? I do. I haven't been able to watch it as much as I'd like to, but there's, you know, a few things I'm in the middle of that I got to finish. Like, you know, uh, my hero academia, um, Titans attack on Titan. Uh, I've been watching some, uh, I forgot what the, it's like the newer, like kind of samurai one. Uh, so like with the little girls, like a possessed by like a demon. What is that? I don't know. I I was just thinking of, um, oh, samurai shampoo is another uh, good one. I love samurai shampoo. I love, I, I love, love the samurai artwork shampoo. in that. The yeah. artwork in that is so cool. Never got it. Samurai never shampoo got it is anime. Anime's no. not anime's not necessarily for everyone, but you know, it, it tends to be like if you find it, you know, you, you kind of love it. You know, um oh Demon Slayer, that's that's another good one. That's the one, Demon Slayer. Yep, Demon Slayer. Probably probably yeah. Randy again. Um just says right, Facebook user, but, um, okay. uh, yep, and Doctor Stone. I love Dr. Doctor Stone. Doctor Stone, well. yeah, yeah, I do like that. <laughs> and, and that's what I like too about um like just looking at some of your art is the the clean lines that do kind of have that inspiration at least that's what i could see because i watch a ton of anime i i can yeah. tell you i can tell you right now it's like all of them go together and most of it's like blank 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 from another world blank 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 <laughs> and, and it's like yeah i just i watch all this stuff on on um <laughs> senku naruto. <laughs> yeah, Nar- naruto yep yep Apparently he likes Naruto. I, I don't have any problems with it. I just haven't watched it. I, don't, I never got into One Piece. That's that's all I'll, I'll say. I, just, I never I, I never got into that either. It just didn't appeal to me. But um, I but I like that. I like that aspect of uh, of your artwork as well. Like the the really clean lines aspect. And it is it is reminiscent of some of your peers. Um, and and I would actually put you in there with a cat like with Ernest who did our uh, our uh, our logo and also with mr ben bishop so because it's like i see a lot of uh similar line work you know and, and maybe it's just the way that you guys ink is similar or something like that but um that's that's one of the aspects i really liked about the uh the most recent piece that i saw from you on the tags group so yeah yeah the thing with, with ben it's it's interesting i like uh i like that he doesn't he doesn't really ink he just he just kind of has he he starts off kind of the way that uh, that I do it, but like you kind of do like a rough, like on a tablet, blow it up, um, use a light box, and go over my go over my rust in like a finished nice. pencil. But what he does, he'll go over his uh, pencils again with a darker pencil. Oh, and nice! He doesn't, he doesn't really ink, <laughs> so but I kind of like that because it still looks like pencils and it's a, it's got a softer look to it. Um, I haven't really tried that myself as to like, you know, just do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, I do like his style, but I'm still, I'm still, you know, doing stuff with a pen, uh, or a brush pen mostly. What do you but like to it, use? Um, what do you like to use for paper? Are you using like a Bristol board or, uh, what do you use for like a, a commission? I'll say. Usually Bristol board, uh, nine by 12 to like, you know, or, or larger, like 11 by 17. So. That's awesome. Yeah. We had, uh, some mentions of, uh, you had your chance at granite. So we, we may as well kind of transition into that. So since we've been talking about your art and we talked about, uh, Mr. Ben Bishop as well, um, recently when, and I say recently as in within the past year, uh, you made an <laughs> appearance at the granite state comic-con. And um, which, uh, you know, you and I have talked about this before, but uh, you were able to kind of compete in that uh, artist content competition, right? For the, is it the heavyweight championship? Uh, what, what do we call this? I'm not even sure. It was just like a, like a draw off. I, I wasn't even draw-off. supposed to, supposed <laughs> to like even be in it. They just, they needed people. And uh, Randy, you know, being the nice guy that he is, he was just like, hey, you're doing this thing. And I'm like, what? It's like, you're, you're doing this thing where you're going to, going to be in a, a draw competition thing it's like just for fun i'm like oh, okay it's cool and i was like who else is going to be in it and he's like oh ben I'm like oh, okay and uh santa luco yeah. my crew <laughs> yeah. it's like oh, are you kidding me no pressure <laughs> right, no I, pressure man yeah right i gotta i gotta draw you know like you no know, mateus is like a big you know 
a big influence on me. Uh, I I just I love his turtles at the moment I saw them, and I was just like, oh wow. So I just I was just like, okay, I get to sit next to Santa Luca and draw and be embarrassed by how poorly it looks next to his. But it was it was a fun time, you know. Once once like we got in there, we started working. It I wasn't as nervous anymore as I was in the beginning. <laughs> But you know, it was it was a fun time. Santo was a a, a really awesome guy. He's super um, chill, huh? He really is. He's, is he's that really like down to earth guy? <laughs> he's such a down to earth guy. He's just fun. He's fun to hang out with, and uh, it's just it's it's a lot of fun. And he's good to talk like talk shop with too, like talk about art and everything, and like art influences and stuff like that. So I had a good time with him at Granite. Let's see, uh, let's see. Rob was saying, Ruth was saying he didn't like the speed of the sketch off. They should have let the artist just uh, do one or two big pieces. Yeah, but but also Mike also suggested that they uh, find items around like random to use instead of. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> that that's his thing, and like that was my first time meeting Mike, and and Mike is a super awesome guy. Like he's he's interesting in that he he can ink with whatever he has around the fact that he's using like tree branches and flowers and like all kinds of crazy stuff he just found outside um but yeah he's he's super nice and it was fun you know hanging with him and drawing with him too it sounds like such a surreal thing yeah like just (laughs) yeah it's, it's it's cool that they had you there and obviously you did well enough to where you're keeping up with these guys, these legends, these, these, you know, guys were like, Oh my God, I can't believe that. Cause I've seen the <laughs> stuff that you did. And I'm like, it's good, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, we're getting a lot of comments here. <laughs> so <laughs> had your chance referring to Ernest, not stunning me. Okay. <laughs> right. Ernest is a stunner thing. I'm going to have to agree with Rob. Everybody needs to draw with the accessories that I sent to uh, Ruth. That's what y'all need to do. Who would you send to Ruth? A bunch of uh, uh, turtle accessories. You sent him turtle like accessories? Like some of the toys? We, oh, we sent him, we sent that's, him a, that's a, a cool idea. Thing. Like You just sent him like like the accessories that came in like the like, like random turtle toys? Yeah, because I sent like... him I sent him like, what was it? I sent him like some books for me for, for me to get signed and remarked by him. And uh-huh. then I sent I sent him um, hang on baby boy. I sent him an obscurity uh Last round in issue three, black one uh-huh. for him to have, and which McCullough's, and then toys for the accessory. And I think I, I think it's last time I sent him in is a Sugi Rabbit because he just did like a, a oh yeah the Usagi the Usagi yeah yeah yep. the Usagi is sick yeah so, yeah that's... yeah all kinds <laughs> just... of like different toys and stuff. Hang on, I actually have a bunch of. Them. I'd love I'd yeah, love to see a cover of uh, Usagi. Uh, just and, and now with the turtles and Usagi coming out, there's going to be a lot more opportunity for that. Um, are, yeah. are you seeing? Um, are you seeing a lot more people requesting that character, or is it still like a question where like people are like I want the Ronin? You know, uh, what what kind of commissions are people asking for? Uh, it it depends. I've, I got a I got a lot of mashups. Oh, that's cool. Let's speak back with accessories. I get a lot of oh. I get a lot of matchups. Um like uh I've done I'm working on like a a Bad Meets Evil like album cover mashup with a uh, with uh Shredder and Crying on it first for uh one one of the members of the group. Oh that's um, cool. I've done I know early on I was doing a lot of uh Venomized characters. <laughs> Like a whole lot of, cause I I did something. It was just a one off of, of a turtle character that was venomized. <laughs> and uh oh, quiet, Randy. I'll I'll finish your dance, Sinestro. See this guy. Sinestro. Sinestro and Bader are like my Breaking two favorite my balls. Uh, DC villains. So I I'm with you. You got you got to finish this Sinestro. Hey, I'm I'm a big Lantern guy too. As far as DC stuff goes, I I love Lantern stuff, and Sinestro is is a top notch villain in my book so i forget yeah. who, who we were talking about and, and i don't know if this was part of our conversation but um if um no no this this was i was talking to somebody else but if you had to assign a lantern to each of the turtle characters right um who would who would you pick it and who would be what color oh man see me and me and uh 
me and Randy were were trying to like we're trying to like you know figure that stuff out because uh, he was doing a he wanted a, a request of some turtle stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, and I I was what? I was going through this. Uh, it's, he he says, "Don't you dare." Rob says, "Casey in an iced tea body count homage would be sweet." So uh, <laughs> body count, which which is a, a very obscure sort of metal band that Ice T did. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So Randy, Randy says, "Shh." It's, I I assure um, you, Randy, this actually came up recently. I was I was at a. a I'm not I'm not spilling and, the beans. <laughs> yeah, it's something else. But um, it, I, it I, could be it could be anything with those. Depends on with with turtles. You you know how you how you you know categorize your turtles. I mean, I always seem if you just do them by the colors, you can match them that way. Um. Raph is obviously the Red Lantern. I mean, there's no, there's no surprise there, you know. Yeah, both, both in emotion and and like you know color, so they, it kind of fits, you know. Yeah. It just Donnie, uh, Donnie's one of those things where it's like you know, <laughs> he can go either way. He gave us stage directions. Look at that slams. <laughs> this is blasphemy. <laughs> uh, oh, he says, did you show your lost years on here yet? We'll have to get to that. Oh, the um, issue two cover has it been, has it been posted around already? I I have not seen much uh, for uh, issues. Do you have uh, you've got a lost years? I've cover? seen some. I've seen some. There's a lost years two cover that I have. Um, let's see. Oh no! Yeah, it has been shown. It has been. Shown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, it's an issue. It's an issue two lost years that I got to do. And what? Oh, oh, Randy's putting out secrets. Nice. Really? I Heard can do that. Guys. He says you can All drop right. the newest one as well. How do I, yeah, how do I share that then? <laughs> we'll show us the goods. Let's see. How do you share it? Well, if you have two screens, you can do a uh, present at the bottom of the uh, screen here and you can, you can show one there. So um, you could send it to me. All right, I'll send. I'll send it to you, and then you can. It's probably quicker that way. All right. Well, yeah, I didn't know I could show both already. I'll show wow. the um. Randy, are, it, who's this? Who's this going to be with, though? Yeah, yeah. Is it a Papa Sebo or is it Randy's uh, MacArthur's house? Arthur's auctions. The the first one is, I believe that's Sebo's. Oh, posted in uh, Epic Shells. Great. You can check it out in the Epic Shells Facebook group. That's an exclusive. And... It's an Epic Shells exclusive. That's what it is. Yep. You can uh, show your part in hand. Okay. At least you can show you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the first one The first one is uh, is Sebo's. Hi, this is Adam, a.k.a. Casey Jones from Casey Jones Livewire, and you're listening to Epic Tales from the Sewers. Time for a knuckle sandwich, punk. <laughs> and at very least, I'll have it uh, I'll have it posted with this uh, for anyone else who can't. Um, and he says, no, I mean, um, it... His issue too, I posted in Epic Shells. The issue hasn't been officially revealed yet. Well, this sounds like they're revealing it. So, issue two so is that, so I can't show the other one, right? Sebo and make it through. Okay, here we go. Yep. So, number two is Sebo, and number three is Sebo and myself from Randy. Thanks, Randy. So, R- Randy, I'm I'm double checking with you. I can show the third one. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so let me get that up there somehow. Let me see. Boy, is this always fun? Let's see. Wait for Randy to answer. <laughs> yes or no? Just show the pencils for number three. He's telling you to show the pencils. He wants. Oh, he wants me to show the, the pencils to number three. Cool. All right. Show us the goods. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's actually really really cool looking. I'm, I was just looking at it now. Uh, wow, this is great, and it's it's the two characters everybody loves, so that's really cool. And Ooh, Kirby, yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the character, Eric. You got me. Yeah. I'm trying, damn it, I'm trying. 
Let's see. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's see Pull up check. the other ones. All right. There's the pencils the three I just sent you. So you can right. show I'm going to try to share uh, this other one here. All right. Bear with me, guys. I'm not the uh, the StreamYard king. So <laughs> usually I've got to have a second screen to kind of present this. Let's see. Everyone wants you to show it. Every oh, time I imagine a Tinder mashup. I wish I could show the, 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 full, the full one of the third one, but he just wants the pencils. I guess that's all I'm allowed to show. <laughs> I oh, guess yeah. Cause... Well, I mean that's that's kind of how it goes. So he's know. doing. He yeah. are, are you doing the coloring too? And everything. Am I doing what? Are you doing the colors and all that stuff? Because I no. know, like, as in that's... BJ, BJ Han has done. BJ, some... BJ did the colors on the on the number two. Yeah. So, so number thought. three is a. So I'm guessing it will be now. It will be a surprise. Inker and colorist. That I can't say. I'm guessing. <laughs> Which is why he told me just to show pencils. All right, one sec. We'll see if I can get this. Randy uh, says, "Tell him who it is." Now, no. <laughs> he do says, it. "No." Do it now. Do it now. <laughs> now. No. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody. No. Okay. Uh, long time friend. We went to college together. Um, Sophie Campbell. It will be wow. going to be in, in the colors on that cover. Uh, wow. We've been, Dying to work on something together, and uh, we we decided we were going to do this one, and uh, that's, it came out really great. That's but big. I can't show it yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a huge Sophie Campbell fan. Absolutely. Um, I I I've reached out to her like two weeks ago on Twitter. I'm like, hey, you know what's what's going on? And, you know, uh, I I like to just put my little things in there and be like, so Leonardo's pretty cool. You could, you know, not torture him. You know, <laughs> Sophie is is the the actual uh, writer right now for the the regular series, and Tom right. Wallace is handling the um, the spinoff book for uh, Armageddon Game. So yeah. I'm like, that's that's a big deal, you know. Um, let's see if I can get. Are you right, see if I can pull this up? All right, and all right. Let's see all if right, we can right. show. There we go. There. Well, no, that's a little meta. <laughs> right, There's three see. of us. I see so many of us. All right. Oh. Can you guys see this? Okay. So that's issue two. All right. Issue two. Right. So Turtles mm -hmm. Lost Years. You can see all the weapons there. You can see a little picture of the boys. And uh, you've got the Ronin over there reading. So this is this is like Mikey, like the proto Ronin, you know, and then you've got Casey Marie and you can see that there's sort of like just a a sort of remembrance where they're not facing each other so they're thinking of each other and not in the same place at the same time so I've just right. interpreted the whole thing so you look at the uh, the books and it has the uh, no peace and no peace K-N-O-W yeah she, so uh, that's that's a really cool pickup too you know that's awesome, and and I love Casey Marie Jones, just such a cool character, and I'm, I'm so excited cool. to see just uh, some more stuff with her. So, all right, let's see, and uh, I'll see if I can grab this other one, and I'll move that for a second, so so our eyes can readjust. Let me just uh, see if I can pull up this other one that you just sent, and yeah, Sophie Campbell's awesome, man. Just I I love everything that she's doing right now, and and I think that you know there's there's some division on people. They're like, oh, I don't I don't get it. You know, because it's not the mirage and it's it's not, you know, what I'm looking for. I'm like, sometimes you just don't know, you know, and, and it sticks yeah. up on you. It's like this is this is the most character development we have ever seen uh, for. That's, a, that's uh, what I like about what she does. Like, you know, yeah. usually when she's doing stuff, it's slice of life. You know, you get some downtime, yeah. you get more character development, you get more insight into who they are as like you know just characters besides just you know the fighting so yeah, that's why exactly. like whenever she was doing like the northampton story the first northampton story was her where they go to the barn and like recoup after the uh after the fight well that's that's like your classic uh 
Chris Claremont palette refresher too, like uh, from from his uh, X Men run, where it's like, okay, the X Men just got their asses handed to them by the Marauders. What happens? All right, well they're going to go to Australia and or, or not the Marauders, but that would be the uh, the Reavers. You know, it's like, oh, that's your palette cleanse. Get everybody yeah. back to where they should be. So you know, and that's the beautiful thing about it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this again, and let's see. All right, can you see this one? Because this is gorgeous. Oh man, he's got the four new ones. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you've got uh, Uno, Odin. Uh, is it uh, Moya? And uh, who's who's the last one? Yi. Uh, Yi. Yeah. Wow. Up front and just beautiful. And, and you can see like the the different sort of incense tricks. I can't even say the word, but uh, <laughs> just uh, how they're just so different, and the shells work differently, and you know, like the the paws. I'll call them paws. I guess are different. Yeah, well, I, I really like the designs three, for those. Three hands, three fingers on the hands, still. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Very cool, and uh, that's that's exciting. It's exciting that there's there's already uh, issue three going around on this because this is going to be what five issues and a uh, a one one off uh, lost day. Yeah, there's a, there's a lost day that's coming. I forget when. Is it? Next month, April. Yeah, so, uh, so we we talk a lot about the Bish Kids Club. Most recently, we got the box that had the uh, the fo- the family photo album. So, um, my question for you, Chris, is: Did you use that as your reference for this cover, the family photo? No, album? no, you no didn't? I okay. did. <laughs> I I had uh, it had um. What, he says he um, thinks it's after issue four. Randy Sanders. Oh, for the lost day. Mm. Very cool. But no, I, whenever the uh, the issue came out, like the day the issue came out, uh, I got some some screenshots, some like pictures sent, so I could use it as a reference. Oh, that's to cool. look at. So that's that's pretty much what I use. I flipped through, you know, the first, you know, five pages of that that had all the all of them on it, and just kind of aged them up a little bit because I knew. Uh, they're supposed to be supposed to be a little bit older. Yeah, Rand- Randy sent me the pics. <laughs> Randy sent yeah. me the pics of those. He's a he's a good facilitator of of things I need <laughs> when I when I need them, especially when it comes to doing the art. The uh... oh god, <laughs> good lord! <laughs> what kind of pics? Okay, <laughs> turtle I'll pics. That's it. Was- it. I'm not going to lie, my mom kind of wet in the gutter too, especially when it comes from Randy. <laughs> Fish oh, kids in the house, you know. That's of course. <laughs> you got to love. No, it. that uh, that concept for that second issue is actually Randy's concept. Uh, we we kind of worked out that a bit, and uh, <laughs> you bastard. Uh, uh, I like it. I like um, <laughs> where where you pull the inspiration from is is uh, you know a. a it seems like from my experience with Randy is that he has a really good understanding of art and I like the sentiment that's in here. Cause it, it comes across and it's not like, I didn't have to dig for it. It was right there for me to see. Right. So, and, and um, it reminds me a lot of, he <laughs> said those in confidence future. <laughs> um, it reminded me a lot of when we had um, Aaron Bartling on and the conversation that we had with him. And the thing that he said, he's like, you know, he goes back to a lot of things like Toy Story and Pixar mm-hmm. because that stuff is all done with purpose to elicit emotion, which right. I think is, is very much what your cover is doing. And it's not just cool to look at. It looks like the art in the book, which which is a huge, a huge um, bonus because it's like, oh, wow, I can clearly recognize who this this person is. But then it's like, all right, there's something going on here because they didn't exist looking like this at the same time. So it kind of right. makes you do some mental work on it. And, and it just does give you that sort of like longing to it. And, um, and yeah, I, I love how you, you picked up on that little no K N O W piece and no piece. That's, that's really cool. Well, that's, that's the main thing that, that Randy said to me, he was like, you know, we should do something with, with this, with the two, you know, the two books and have it be the two different like time periods. And I was like, that's, that's really cool. And he was saying that you know 
the back to back shot would be cool, like just a complete split. But so I kind of took that and altered it slightly so they kind of overlap a little bit. And um, just, yeah, I definitely wanted to have that emotion uh, of her kind of studying it and, and like, you know, thinking of Michelangelo and this this task that's ahead of her where she has to train the train the new the new turtles and Mikey reading, you know, reading the book and thinking of all the horrible things that, you know, that happened to that led him to that point. Yeah. So it's almost I like think, she's like, she's his redemption, you know. Right. What um, right, what yeah. if anything? If you if you can think of it, and, and I'll I'll put you on the spot here. You you may not be able to, but we we have uh, within the next week, I believe, by the time this is coming out, um, issue two will be out. Um, what would you like to see happen, or or um, something like that uh, with the book, like um, with Lost Years, like ultimately, or just in like issue two. Uh, you can go either way with it. You could say, "Oh, I'd like to see this in um, two, this in three. Or you could just say, "I hope this gets explained." You know, any. I, I just want. I just want to see. You know, the further. You know, what the next step in like the story is. I mean, we kind of want to know what Mikey's what Mikey's doing as far as like you know his training, and you know we already we've already gotten introduced to like you know the ghost the ghost brothers, you know, that's like behind him all the time now. Um, but mostly I'm just excited to see what the new turtles are going to be doing, like their whole, you know, their next steps, like, you know, what are they going to be doing? What is Casey Marie going to be showing them? What are they, what are they going to be learning? Yeah. How are they going to look as they're growing up? Because I know that, you know, the designs are made so you can see how there's slight changes in like, the shell shape or pattern or anything so you can tell they're growing i'm just curious to see like what they're going to look like in the next you know the next issue yeah and um i know they've shown like outlines of it but i'm not i'm not 100% certain that i've seen like what their weapons are going to look look like 3 right oh uh final approval for number 3 go for it so well i mean we showed the oh. pencils so i mean i guess if if you have the colors on it we could we could show that yeah. too yeah yeah i'll show you those <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Issue one was a little slow for me. I mean, they just I mean, I understand they're trying to pretty much get it in get everything introduced and right. get a get an understanding, you know, what was going on with Mikey and then with the new turtles and all this other stuff. You know, one thing I'm kinda shocked about with the new turtles is that okay, so Mikey's in Japan, right? Uh huh. So each turtle is named one in a different language why didn't they go i'm kind of curious so why they didn't go the route uh doing a japanese one which would be ichi yeah i'm not i'm not even sure i mean that's another thing i'm hoping we find out in this in this second issue because you know we don't know how they got their names we just know that that's their name yeah yeah and, and some and of them really... actually like they mean one but they also mean something else too right like um, I, I was looking at like Moha or um, is it Moha or Moja, and and Moja. I was like, okay, that has that has two two meanings for it. So one could be like like uh, one who reacts with anger or something like that, and the other one could be one like the number one. So uh, yeah. Randy says Randy says because Ben's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're named that. Okay, all right, um, that's, that's funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna share uh, that screen real quick just so anyone uh, can see it. All right. All right. Can you guys see it? No, not yet. No. No. Okay. Oh, that looks sick looking now. Not gonna lie. There, you can see it now. Mm-hmm. It's dark. Look at this. Like, look mm -hmm. at that ink work on there. This is beautiful. So you've got. I, the I love how turtles. how Sophie inks. I've always yeah. I've always liked how Sophie's inks since we were since we were in school. Like so. Whenever I pencil it, I kind of already had my mind how I want, how I thought it would look when she when she put inks on it, and this is literally like what was in my head. It was kind of amazing to see, like when I saw the inks, it like 
it's exactly how I thought it would look and how I was hoping it would look. And she she really killed it on this. Be honest, was she always drawing kaiju in uh, in school? <laughs> uh, a little, not not yes. as much. There's a there's a lot of like you know stuff that she kind of created on her own that she would draw. Um, and a lot of you know, not as much kaiju as you would think. But uh, I I love her kaiju design. She has an amazing Gamera redesign. It's like really sick. I would wish it was real. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, no, she's she's me and me and her have always talked turtles. We've always that was kind of our like, you know, connection. Uh we would talk turtles, um, read Usagi, uh, all that stuff. And I just kinda hang out and you know, with her most of the time that I was at school. So Oh, apparently, um uh, Facebook user, I'm, I'm guessing it's Ernest or, or uh, Steve, um, <laughs> has it read it. There's new turtle spoilers, you guys. Yeah, it was like day one. I was telling people in Epic Shells, I'm like, hey, don't post this stuff. So it should be a virgin <laughs> cover with a trade dress on back. Yes, I um, agree. I mean, I, I like the idea of having those spots. Like I, we were talking to Mike Ruth about this, like putting a little circle or something in there so you can put remarks on it. You know, I, yeah. I love I love those ideas rather than just like a complete. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of sketch cover rather than virgin cover. But like, uh, but yeah, I, I like those ideas. And it seems like you've got a good spot right there in the water there where you can absolutely do that. So, yeah, but that's, yeah. That's, that's fantastic. So is this technically yeah. um, is issue number two technically your first uh, Turtles book? Um. No, uh, I guess technically my first Turtles book would be uh, 100. I yeah, did Eric, Eric a, says no. <laughs> I did, I I did an issue 100. I was like... Yeah, yeah. Yep, the, the Bitch Kids uh, exclusive cover um, is is my is my first issue 100. And uh, yeah, that was, that was really cool because everybody wanted me to do that like when when they decided that they wanted the bitch kids 100 cover and i was nominated to do to do that cover so it was it was very exciting and i'm happy that you know that was my first one but then you know i got to do a cover with uh rich you know he's he's the one that uh, rich, rich much, yeah it was rich one yep. he, he does all the uh all the the list of all the turtles covers he has a Big extensive library, so if you're missing anything, you can always go and check that out and see what you're missing. Yeah, he's he's got um, the archive, so you could go there and yeah, see he's got a huge anything. archive. But uh, then I that that was my second uh, issue five of Last Ronin, and I was on that with like a bunch of other people, including uh, Ernest and uh, Casey and BJ and uh, Aaron Aguri. I have I have two of copies of that actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and uh, Kevin. So cool yeah. thing is that I'm on the I'm on the front cover with with Kevin. So that's that was pretty awesome. Did you mention um uh you mentioned Casey Jones? Casey Jones, <laughs> <laughs> the artist. Oh uh, no, no Casey. Yeah, Casey the Bish Kid. Yeah, yeah, she's she's uh, uh she Casey Wilson. Some... Yep. Yeah, yeah Wilson. Absolutely. I, I actually bought one of my copies from her and she included a tiny sketch card. So, and, and the cool thing is I didn't know she had told me, she's like, Oh, and they all tell a story. I'm like, Oh, I had no idea. So that's, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. All right. So that must be, that must be Ernest then because he says the, the greatest uh, Ronin cover ever. Um, <laughs> and it says uh, it was pretty much a bish kid Ronin cover. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. More or less, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah I like, mean, I'd say of. like the majority of the cover was it was us like doing stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. Guys, it was pretty you great. You guys can't see it, but for the record, I have a original Mighty Mutanimals Aaron Hazari up there. Um, oh, you know, nice. I, I I love it. So it's it's all the Mutanimals and it's them like playing in a band. So um, you know, oh he <laughs> let's see. Uh, and Rich is a Bish kid too. Yep, Rich a Bish kid, absolutely. Yep. Um, let's see. Still waiting for your copy. Cough, cough. Oh, do you have extra copies that you're selling of that cover? Oh yeah, I do. And I, he cool. has like two copies. <laughs> Maybe he wants Randy? one signed. <laughs> I'll sign it and I'll remark it like really big. Oh yeah. Really, yeah. 
big ass remark on it. <laughs> I've seen Kevin do that before, like like with like put something over it and like do the remark in like an, an awkward space on like some of these covers and then, like does that bring the signs like the all the way across the whole the whole book. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Meanwhile, so yeah, that was that was my second cover. And, around uh, on the <laughs> okay. Man, they are not letting up on you, man. Right. Never. Oh, you never gave him the copy at Granite. Okay, so he needs one. Well, it's not like he doesn't know where to find me. I'll, I'll, I'll give him. Oh, middle finger remark. Okay, maybe with a Sinestro ring on it. Yeah, there you go. That's that's really cool. Or a so, big angry red ring. Let's see. Oh, what, so what? What yeah. were we going to talk? We talked about. Um, we talked about Granite. Um, what kind of plans do you have for um, cons this year? Like, will we see you at Granite? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Granite again this year. Uh, most likely uh, Baltimore. Aside from that, I haven't really thought about much. I have, you know, a new a new baby, a nine month old. His name is Winston. <laughs> so, uh, and I know, yeah. I know, I asked you before, but um, is uh, is he at all named after a um a comic character or anything like that? Um, or is he named after family? What's who's uh what's Winston all Win- about here? Winston's name after uh my my father in law who who passed, but uh he was a really nice guy. He's a good teacher. Um and it's just a really cool name, I thought. I always I always think, you know, it's a name you don't hear a lot. So we thought Winston was perfect for him. Oh um, uh Randy saying maybe uh Rhode Island Comic Con. Yeah, maybe kneecaps oh you want turtle kneecaps okay that's what he wants he wants his remark with kneecaps okay <laughs> <laughs> i love it i absolutely love it yeah um we we should hopefully be at granite um you know we're, we're working out the details on that but uh eric and i and um you know we, we should be over there so we get to meet everybody in person which would be fantastic you know because uh i'm a little bit farther you away you yeah, know let's see uh uh, you should get on Baltimore. Isn't that this week? I think there's a there's one going on in Baltimore. If if not, maybe it just happened. But um, I know no, Baltimore's a... not not until like October. I think it's usually like like September October. Yeah, there's there's a couple that are around it. There was like a four states or something like that one too that I saw that was uh I, I guess uh like uh, Renee um the voice of April was going to be there. So I was looking. I'm like, oh, what's this one? You know. Yeah, I don't know. So let, let me ask you this. So you're at you're at a con, right? And you're going there and you're excited. You're you're a featured artist, you're an artist alley, and you see that there's a guest there. Who would be the guest that would just blow your mind? You're like, oh my God, I've got to go meet this person. It could be an artist, it could be an actor, an actress, uh, it could be uh, you know, uh kit from night cry night rider, it could be like anything. Who would be the, the person that you're like, I've got to get in line to go meet that person? Oh man, I don't even know. <laughs> I like it. being an artist for sure. I'm I'm into so many artists. Uh, Santa Luca was that guy for me until Granite. Um, he says Jerry but, it could be sports person too. You know, like I'm I'm a big Red Sox fan. So like if you if you put like Carl Ustrimsky out there or something like that, I'd be like, ah, right, yeah, I'm going. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Santa Luca was was it was it for me, but now. Uh, I'd say next on the list would be uh, Dan Mora. Uh, Dan Mora is going to be at C2E2. Hopefully, uh, we're going to be uh, talking to him about his uh, his work on the uh, Turtles Power Rangers crossover. Dan Mora is yeah, a great answer, man. Great. That's a really good artist. And um, some of the stuff he's done, it's like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize. Uh, R- Rosario Dawson was just uh, at uh, a whole bunch of cons last year, too, prior to uh, filming Ahsoka and all that, so but yeah, we're, obviously Rosario Dawson would be amazing. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's my new answer. Um, oh, what is this? Oh God. Okay. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Randy, for that. So, <laughs> I'm not. I thought. I thought. Um, okay. I don't know how to res- respond to that one, so we're just going to glance <laughs> over it. All so. right, we are trying so Dan, to keep this somewhat Dan. friendly here and clean, Randy. <laughs> Dan Moore is a great one. Are you reading that uh, that book? I've uh, I picked yeah. him up. I haven't read him yet, though. Ab- absolutely, uh, I I loved the, the uh, that he was doing the covers. 
and he was doing the covers for the first series. Um, did you get all five? Of them? Did you get all five of that connecting cover? Uh, I'm actually missing a couple, but I do have the gatefold that has the entire like image. I so. may have um, I may have an extra if you need it. I'll I'll hit you up and see what you're missing because uh, I've got like all five. Maybe I'll just shoot them over to you. So, because I cool. I bought extras, so I was like, all right, cool. You know. No, I've, I've been a fan of Dan since uh, uh, the Claws book. Uh, he would do that that book every year, it's like a Christmas special. So. Like an origin of like Santa Claus, kind of like a, a bit of a, like pagan origins, but kind of a, a superhero kind of twist to it. I'm not familiar with that, but I could definitely see that um, uh, with his style working with like the type of shading. Like I, I could see him doing uh, like trees really well and and things like that. So I I definitely really like his stuff and the, yeah. his his take on the turtles is pretty cool. You know they. they I, look- I, they look different. Definitely like it a lot. I, I like it. He's um Once in Future is another book he does that's really good. Um I am, I'm very familiar with that one. Absolutely. I've I've read some of those. That's over now. It's it's finished, but it was a really good book. Um and obviously, like, you know, his Power Rangers, like when that when that came out and he was working on that book, I I love that, you know. I'm me being a, a, a Power Rangers fan and a Turtles fan, like this crossover is obviously like really exciting for me. Especially since he's doing the art this time. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's good. I didn't know you were a Power Rangers fan, so but mostly it's, it's, mostly old school the the OG school. Rangers. <laughs> we get mm-hmm. a lot a lot of them out here at um in because I'm in Illinois, so a lot of them are out here, like the turbo guys and all that. They come to like the uh like uh like oh who's this guy? It's like, Oh yeah, this guy played the Red Ranger on Turbo Ninja Extreme, you know. <laughs> plus or whatever You're like oh, okay i don't i don't really know you know them because i i wasn't <laughs> he's not a fan so um that that's earnest <laughs> yeah that's what i just figured i'm like so we're not gonna see a shaved ice with uh the power rangers but um we get uh walter and um uh what's his name david david yost and uh walter out here and i, I can't think of walter's last name so the original black ranger and blue ranger and they're yeah, out yeah, walter, jones. walter jones yeah I, yeah. I only knew him from this backyard wrestling movie called Backyard Dogs. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was so terrible. But um yeah, they're out here all the time and they're just like selling their stuff. And I'm like, holy crap, I just like met these guys. They were just like out and like, hey, buy my shirts. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, so, I was only ever a fan of the uh, the OG guys. Uh just um I stopped I stopped watching after after Turbo. <laughs> Turbo was the one I didn't like as much, but yeah, the OG guys are, are my favorite. So, go check out uh, Walter's hairline in Brink. <laughs> is that is this the the new movie that just came out? I, I haven't. I have no idea what that is. But okay, so and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm scared. I'm scared. I, I have <laughs> to see it after, now. After that Especially after the whole <laughs> one thing he just said earlier. It's it's all good. Uh, what did you, let's see? Rob is asking because you've read this. Uh, what did you think of part two of the crossover? Oh, it's it's great. I'm on I'm on three now, but uh, yeah, I like I like part two. Um, I knew. Well, there's like a little twist thing. I guess they did in the third in the third book that I kind of saw coming in the second. But uh, I like all the characters in it. I like that we got to see more slash like more you know more mutants in there and i like the fact that they both the rangers and turtles can can morph <laughs> oh man he says he says worst crossover ever and i'm like i do believe there's worse and and i'm going to tell you i'm a huge booster gold fan and booster gold meets the flintstones is probably the worst crossover i've ever read <laughs> so that was that was just awful like uh at one point, he kills an alien and then uses it as like a sock puppet. So I'm like, yeah, this is not my cup of tea. I'd rather see TMNT and Charlie Brown team up. Wow. Okay. Raph keeps, is Raph Lucy and he keeps pulling away the. <laughs> what about Gargoyles and the, and the Turtles? That I love to see. 100%. That would be- <laughs> <laughs> And then, we, and then we've got uh, the X Files uh, meet Transformers was odd. Yeah, but you know what was really cool was First Wave, where you had um, 
Mask with Matt Tracker, and then you had Rom the Space Knight, G.I. Joe, and Transformers all together. So that that was really freaking cool. And I don't believe X-Files was in that one, but, you know, they, they probably could have been. They could have just thrown them in My Little Pony. And, but um, and let's see. That sounds better than Dumb Power Rangers. Yep. And let's see. Um, X-Files Team NT was cool. Yeah, it's, it's a shame that they only went the one issue. Street Sharks and Turtles. Absolutely. No. That yep. would be cool. No. And that's that's one of those things. No. Uh, <laughs> I will not give in from my friend. My friend always. I, I'm not a fan of Street Sharks after seeing that 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 Vin Diesel commercial. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta check these out. <laughs> yeah, the crow. Nope. Yeah, the crow would be nope. awesome. Want to be want to be turtles is what they are. And uh, <laughs> and Rob, you're right. And they also had all of those uh, IDW properties do the infestation where they were they were talking about aliens like My Little Pony, Transformers, The Crow, X Files. All of them did it, and that was like one of the early on books um, we yeah. did cover it on the show. So both issues are somewhat harder to find because they're not in the hardcover editions but if uh, if anyone else is uh, interested you can go back and listen to infestations issues one and two i do cover them on the show so wow the wire and um and gargoyles yeah that would be that would be rough <laughs> so that's uh that's a very baltimore uh <laughs> it's like it's that like the wire, but with, yeah and, and, oh my god yeah that'd be nuts <laughs> that would be really nuts I don't That'd even know be a do super that. dark, super dark gargles. Oh right yeah. There. So um, Team and T and Zelda. Yeah, Team and T and Zelda. Uh, Wu Tang and gargoyles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'd say Wu Tang and, and turtles. I think that would be cool. Randy would love that. That that I would definitely want. <laughs> Oh geez, poor Lexington. Yeah. He never had, he never had a chance. But but really, it's it would be Broadway. So. But um, I, I guess because we didn't get to talk about it yet, we have to talk about gargoyles because uh, apparently you're a gargoyles fan. Um, the the one the one thing I wanted to drop on you. So I, I've been doing podcasting for a while, and um, I've I've had a chance to interview some of the uh, some of the actors, some of the voice actors. So the the coolest experience for me about gargoyles, I, I've got two. One was uh, Jonathan Frakes who played uh, Xanatos. I was I was sitting right next to him, and uh, you know we just started talking about gargoyles, and it was it was the coolest experience. And then um, the other one is I did a full one and a half hour interview with uh, John Rhys Davies, who did Macbeth. Oh, and nice. That was just like getting to talk to him about Indiana Jones and Gimli and all that. And then of course, and I'm like, we got to talk about Macbeth. Macbeth is in two episodes. That's it. He's in like two episodes. And then there's that one part where he shows up and he's fake and he goes, So long, my enemies. You know, it's like yeah, okay. the robot, the robot Macbeth. <laughs> so his his like uh contribution is huge, you know, to this this sort of thing because Macbeth is such a huge character, but it's like he's just like, Oh, I did that one day and it was no big deal. Huh? You know, I'm like, oh, I loved it so much. It was, you know, it's like, I'm like, it was the most important thing in my life for a while. But <laughs> let's see, slow your roll, homie. So no, Broadway is 100% an amphetamine guy. Okay, well, you know, so that's, that's. <laughs> I guess, I, I don't know. I'm not, you know, what are, what are the kids into now? They like angel dust, gargoyle dust. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would do. I would write a book where people are like smoking the uh, the rock off of the gargoyles because it's like a biological thing. That's that's what I would do. Because what do you do with it afterwards? You never know. You know, they just like sweep it off every night. <laughs> do you have a do you have a favorite gargoyles episode? Uh, I'm always a fan of the uh, any episode where there's like an alternate reality. So the. Uh, Future Tense episode. Yeah, that's that's my favorite. With the uh, with the Phoenix Gate, and they travel to like the future where Xanatos is in charge, and well, the old Xanatos is, Xanatos is not in charge. But we <laughs> that's a spoiler for those who don't want to know. I I remember when we first found out that like Puck was really his. Uh, his butler and all that. And then everything yeah, started well, to and... go into Midsummer Night Dream with like Oberon and everything. And I'm like, holy crap, they just made this Shakespeare. You know, because I, yeah. I was a weird I was a weird kid that like read Shakespeare. And I was like, oh wow, this is amazing. You know, so Gargoyles is always gonna have that spot for me. 
So it's uh it's really cool. Who's who's your favorite gargoyle? Is it is it Goliath? I bet it's Goliath. Oh, uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, Brooklyn. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Just from yeah. like just the design aspect of it, I think he's one of the more interesting ones. Him and Lex are the most interesting looking ones. Absolutely, I love their friendship too, and I love that he likes to ride motorcycles and have yeah. opinion. Yeah, they're 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 cool. It's it's such a cool thing, and I I would love to see them um, cross over. Have you um have you done any uh, gargoyles turtles? Uh, commissions, anything like that with those mashes up? Or? Not yet. I did. I did the uh, Brooklyn for an episode of Tags. So it's like eleven by it was eleven by seventeen Brooklyn. That day was pretty good. It was, it was fun. Do you have any? Um, do you have any upcoming uh, appearances on Tags uh, coming up that you're aware of? Or um, the newest, let's see, is it this week that I'm on? I forget it was one Randy would know. Anyone listening, <laughs> uh, tags is uh, things are getting sketchy. It's a uh, live stream sketch show where usually there's three to four artists who do a common theme, and that could be anywhere between like Ninja Turtles, it could be a coaster night where they make uh, tiny, tiny coasters. And coaster night should be coming ones. up soon. I or- am on, I am this Saturday, and it is a My Little Pony one. <laughs> okay, My Little Pony. Well, that's that's the thing. It could be like Muppets as wrestlers, or it could be My Little Pony. And this would be like usually mm. whatever the artist is thinking. So it could be like, oh, I'm thinking of My Little Pony as, you know, I don't know, Slash the Turtle, or My Little Pony as Daredevil or something, you know, and you could throw things out. Or, or you know, Mike Ruth, My Little Pony, but it's a Viking with a blood dripping axe. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the 18th, actually. I think that's the one on the 18th that I'm, that I'm doing. It's My Little Pony. But yeah, and, uh, it'd be interesting. <laughs> uh, Rob asked, uh, he said, Justin, you're going to C2E2? Yes, I am. Um, I, I have obtained my press pass, so I'll be going all three days. Uh, hopefully going to uh, meet up with uh, Dan Mora there and uh, some of the others. Uh, or let's see, a My Little Pony getting sawed in half. Yeah, it could be that too. Uh, <laughs> and it says, this Saturday is the tick. My Little Pony is yeah, following. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I We, we had... We had um, uh, no, oh, geez, I can't even, I can't even. Francois, no, but we had we had Francois on, so Francois Chow, who who did the uh, the father on um on the tick, which was an amazing interview. It was so much fun, such a great guy. I can't wait to get him back someday because I mean he just wanted to talk about sci-fi forever, right? And Townsend <laughs> Coleman, the voice of the tick from the cartoon, was on our show, and um, I mean that was awesome. So uh, it's good. We're bringing up a lot of old episodes. So maybe, maybe some of the old episodes will get a, a good listen after this, but uh, yeah. So we, we got you coming on tags. Um, where do you like folks to find you? Cause I, I have a couple things uh, mentioned there. Um, I've got the CTO for 18 on Instagram. Um, but where, where are you the most active um, besides the Bish chat? I imagine. Um, mostly just Instagram. I'll post a lot there. Um, it's, I usually post on there every time, you know, I finish something. And uh, where, where do you get most of it? What about uh, commissions? Are you open for commissions right now? Uh, right on a case by case basis. Um, I'll, I'm obviously open. after you finish Randy's. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. After I finish a bunch of stuff, I'm I'm working on. But yeah, it it depends <laughs> on like you know what I got going on. <laughs> behave, behave, fella. <laughs> that's, a, that's a horrible no filter no filter <laughs> yeah there's no filter in the chat tonight so that's good um i want to thank you very much for joining us i i know we we um we had a lot better luck this time than the first time and oh yeah you know, definitely some cool stuff to talk about um I, i'm sure i'll be bugging you more about some anime stuff and uh i i i hope that you get uh that sinestro done because i want to see that but um <laughs> How cool is that that we got to reveal these these awesome uh, covers that you're doing and and I seeing as how I run the group I probably should have seen that already posted there but oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Vance is going to treat Randy's commission like Ben treats Bill Senior okay <laughs> oh man which corner <laughs> Oh, the difference is he'll get his. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's right. Inside, That's right. And the inside jokes keep rolling. So mm-hmm. um, 
we usually like to end the show by going into a pizza recipe or anything along those lines. And that'll be on the audio portion. Um, so I got to ask, um, Eric's going to probably ask you a follow-up question to this uh, pizza question. What's your, what's your favorite, um, what's your favorite pizza topping? Oh man. Uh, yeah, I'll say pineapple. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're lead, leading the witness there, aren't you, Eric? <laughs> um, I like, I like, uh, pepperoni. Classic. Classic pepperoni. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I'm a pepperoni and mushrooms guy myself. Uh, Eric, what's, what's your, just so we can, uh, re- refresh the fans on what your pizza. Definitely, definitely, definitely not pineapple. <laughs> I, I love what Randy I'm just said. He said throat, banana Randy. peppers and pineapple. I love that oh, idea. Wow. Punch in your throat. Bacon. Black olives, pineapple, and jalapeno. I I like pepperoni and pineapple. That's I've had that too. That's I like pepperoni and bacon. Pepperoni <laughs> and bacon. That's good. So let's see. Oh man, Crum- the crumbly sausage. Just got here at the end. Not a problem. Even though you just got here on the end, we appreciate it. You'll be able to check this out at epictalesfromthesewer.com. When I I release it, it should be out by next Wednesday, and we'll have the extra things on it, like our our pizza and all that. Uh, sweet and spicy, my dude. That's what uh, Randy says. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, bacon, so oh, I hate you, bacon. Though. So we'll we'll look <laughs> we'll look for a uh, recipe for um, for you to put on there. Um, Mr. Stephen King had um, uh, with Eric uh, their pepperoni rolls from West Virginia. Mm-hmm. So maybe is there is there anything that's uh, specific to the Baltimore area that's pizza that that we should be looking at? Uh, not really. They have to put Old Bay on everything here. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Old Bay, Old Bay is a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had uh, Never. I had one that was like Thai sauce, like Thai chili sauce with uh, crab, and it was like a white pizza. And I'm like, that was not bad. Like it was, it was cooked. It was pretty good. Cheesy yeah. pizza with chicken, tomato, and mushrooms. You know what? That sounds pretty good. Not gonna lie. You know, that does sound actually like better than what I'm probably gonna have for dinner. So, <laughs> <laughs> with with that, um. Is there anything else that uh, you, you want uh, folks to know, like where to find you or anything else like that? And um, and Eric, did you have any other questions? No, I don't. But it was a pleasure having you on here. Oh, absolutely. Finally. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Yeah. No, but, uh, all the all the links you you have up. Uh, see to Retino on Instagram. You know, check out the new uh, Hive Hive. Uh, site i'm on there and uh patreon and uh you know check me out check me out on there you know see if there's anything you like you know i'll do a lot of sketch cards on there for people nice um hopefully you'll be seeing me do more stuff soon as far as like covers hopefully i get like an official one uh me and Sophie are thinking about doing something uh or like an official one so Heck yeah, man. I'd, I'd love to see that. So, And uh, everybody look out, see what you can find. Uh, look for Chris Vance. You can see C Topher 18 on Hive, uh, patreon.com backslash C Vance Art, and Chris Vance on Facebook. And with that, all the audio listeners will be back with a pizza recipe for your pizza recipe of the day. And um, everyone else who was just listening to the live stream, thanks for tuning in. And we'll yeah, catch thanks. you next time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. It's pizza time. And now, in a segment that we call Pizza Time, where we discuss any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or pizza-related food, I give you Pizza Time. So, speaking with Chris, we had an idea to get a, a pizza that would be in, in indicative of uh, just where he's from in Maryland. So, he did mention that they put Old Bay on everything, so we are going with a recipe for Old Bay Pizza. What you're going to need, one 12-inch pizza crust. 2 teaspoons of olive oil, 2 cups picked crab meat, back fin, 8 sliced cooked and crumbled bacon, 1 tablespoon Old Bay or other crabbed seasoning, 1.5 cup of grated sharp cheddar cheese, although I suppose you could use mozzarella. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees, place the crust onto a greased 12-inch pizza pan, top with olive oil, crab meat, bacon, Old Bay seasoning, and cheese. Bake on the lowest oven at 425 for 20 minutes until crust is golden. And that is your pizza for the day, the Old Bay Pizza. Cowabunga, dudes! 
Thank you for listening to the Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. This podcast has no affiliation with Eastman, Laird, Mirage Studios, IDW Studios, Archie Comics, or Nickelodeon Studios. This podcast is a member of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Check out thedorkening.com for other podcasts. Epic Tales from the Sewers is recorded by Justin Cooper and Eric Will. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. It took me 10 years to make the perfect man cave. And then we took it over. And we made it into the multiversal chamber. Then I started my own podcast. And we took that over too. And we're the co-host, the Multiverse Kids. Yeah, and I'm the dad, the geeky dad. And every week, we what? We review the movies, shows, and books. Games and toys. Yeah. And sometimes we even have a special guest. So, join us every week on the Geeky Dad Podcast. Greetings and Shabibans. We are the Retro Reductibus Cephala Podcast, a long-form bi-weekly show that celebrates all the things that made growing up awesome. That sounds good, but I don't know what all those words mean. I think what Parasite seems trying to say is that on Retro Reductibus, we explore a range of retro goodness, from toys, video games, and movies, to cartoons, and even snacks and school lunches. And we do it all with a positive spin, a slew of killer guests, and some very adult language. And you know what else is cool? No. This crazy show is part of the Dorking Podcast Network with new episodes every technical Tuesday. What's that? And if waiting two weeks for a new episode gives you a sad, know that we drop bonus episodes all the time, like the off-format Crow's Nest and an interview series we call The Brick. You can listen to Retro Redoctopus on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or any app that's cool enough to carry the only show that celebrates all the things that make growing up awesome. 